Eddie, obviously a, a very disappointing game to return back to Premier League football. What were your thoughts on Exactly that, yeah. Disappointing game, disappointing start for us. Um, the start of the game is really, really um, where we lost the game today. Um, it's a really good free kick from uh, from their perspective, but we're disappointed to concede it. And and it was a real hammer blow for us against a team that, when you do go behind, are very diff- uh, very difficult to play against. Defensively, very resolute, and we really did struggle to create meaningful chances against them. You had fifty eight percent possession, but just the one shot on target. How much of a concern is that for you? Yeah, it's been um, it's been a challenge for us um, season in that. Way. Uh, creating clear-cut chances, scoring goals and open play hasn't been um, our usual levels. Um, we've always been prided ourselves on being free-scoring and very creative team, but that was missing again tonight, I think. Um, they defended very well. We played too, uh, in front of them too much, didn't get behind their back four at all or, or their midfield. So it was a difficult one for us. And um, yeah, when you're chasing a game um, like that from 2-0 down, um, certainly, we needed to build pressure better, and uh, but we found that very difficult tonight. One of the key positives was obviously the return of David Brooks playing his first piece of Premier League football for over 300 days. How nice was it to see him out on the pitch and, and how key is he going to be moving forward for the remaining eight matches? Yeah, it was great to see him back. I think um, there was an, an element of rustiness in his game, which is to be expected, the length of time that he's been out. But I think there were signs and there were moments of what he's going to bring the team. Um, delighted that he came through that period of time, um, hopefully unscathed. There's a bit of cramp for him, but uh, as I said, physically that's to be expected. He hasn't done a, a, a huge amount of, um, of training with the team, um, but we know how big he's going to be for us. How important is it that both yourself and the fans kind of just remain kind of grounded with him because everyone's looking at him as being the saviour for Bournemouth, the creative influence, the player that we've been missing. How important is it that people just dampen down their expectations on, on what David Brooks can bring? Obviously, he's going to need a lot of time to, to get back to match action. Yeah, it's not a one-man show. I mean, D- David is an important part of, of the team, but we have a, a, a team um, to perform um, and to create chances for each other. We can't be reliant just on him. But uh, in saying that, he is an outstanding player. And I, again, tonight, I think there were moments in there for him which... Uh, is promising for us Um, but obviously the length of time that he's been out there is going to be an element where he's just going to be working his way back to his best levels. Joshua King was challenged by Gary Cahill in in the second half. First of all is is Joshua King okay? Is there anything you're concerned about there? And I know VAR reviewed it but was there more in that challenge? It looked quite reckless. I'd have to see it again Mark. I've only seen the the live version of it so um, I'll be looking at that later for sure. I think Josh, I haven't spoke to him individually. He signaled to the bench that he was struggling and couldn't continue. So that's a, a huge concern. And finally, from me, obviously back in action on Wednesday, a big challenge against Wolves. What can you do in the next two or three days to try and turn things around in terms of the performance and, the, and just lift the lads? Well, we're going to have to consolidate quickly um, and we're going to have to uh, lift our levels from today. Um, Wolves will be... a, a a big challenge for us. But the league is so tight. If you look look down there, one, one or two results can change things very quickly. We have to believe that we're capable of doing that. I believe that we are. Um, but we're going to have to play better than we did today. Thanks, Eddie. Thank you. Okay, I'll head down the list now. It's probably the easiest way. So, Alison, Alison Rudd, anything to ask? Anything to add? Yeah, yes, Eddie, I just wondered... Um, this might be seen that sound a bit mean, but I, I, I did look as though Crystal Palace really enjoyed playing with no fans, just sticking to their their game plan. They were very regimented, and um, I wondered if you felt being at home, in, in some ironic sense, was a disadvantage because normally the ebb and flow of the game would be dictated slightly by encouragement from the supporters. Yeah, I think there's an element of that. I think we we do here, especially we we thrive off the feeling and the atmosphere in the stadium. And especially when you're chasing a game um, like that today, um, historically our crowd have been very good at, at lifting the players. And I do think the second half performance was much improved. We were much better. And a goal at any stage of that half would have, would have changed it for us. It never came. Um, but I do think playing at home is going to be, you're, you're going to be at a disadvantage. I don't think there's any doubt about that. 
Um, so hopefully that can work for us the other, the other side when we play away from home. Thank you. Okay, Ben Fisher. I'm fine, Anthony, it's fine. Thank you. Thanks, Ben. Uh, Dan Rose, Bournemouth Echo. Eddie, they mentioned David Brooks there, but obviously Arnold, Arnold Danjuma came back tonight as well. I think it's his first appearance since December. Just how do you assess his performance? Yeah, I thought Arnold did, did well. I think um, played his part in a much improved second half performance for us. I think uh, one of the disappointments from my side is that we didn't um, didn't get more balls in the box. Um, we didn't get behind their back line more. I think Arnie, Arnie was probably one player that did try and do that for us. Um, but uh, Crystal Palace are a very well organised team, and I think uh, they're, they're one of the teams in the in the Premier League. And I said this before the, the previous game against them that you don't want to go behind to um, because of how well drilled they are and how disciplined they are and how experienced they are at managing those situations. So the early part of the game, really, I think for me was the one where we uh, the part where we lost the game. Thanks, Eddie. Okay, Dan Matthews, Daily Mail. Okay, thanks. Thanks, sir. Jim White, Daily Telegraph. No. Oh. Okay. Um, Sorry, I'm not here now. Sorry. Hello. Go ahead, Jim. Yeah, uh, you mentioned the early exchanges. Was that due to rustiness uh, that things didn't go well in those early stages? Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. That's a difficult one to answer, really. I think um, we'll go away and reflect on that. I think certainly there would will be an element of rustiness, um, uh, but I don't think we can use that as an excuse. I think um, confidence is a massive thing, and I think the goal, the first goal, probably hit us. The second goal was a hammer blow for us. Um, I thought the team responded really well in that moment, being two 0 down. But we can't we can't play when we're two 0 down. We have to play uh, right from the start, and that's the disappointing thing. Okay, um, Peter Rutzler from The Athletic. I'm just on mute. Hi, Eddie. Um, Hi. Just on Philip Billing, he wasn't in the squad today. Can you give an update on, on him? Yeah, Phil got an ankle injury um, uh, right at the start of uh, our training back. Um, he was very close to being involved tonight, but just missed out. We just felt that um, he probably wasn't ready, hadn't done enough work. So we're very hopeful we can get him back um, very soon. Great. And just on the start of the game, it, it seemed like the, and you mentioned it here, that was such an important part. The, the pundits on the BBC were commenting on it as well. It just seemed they lacked that sort of sharpness. Were you happy with how the team were able to prepare for the three weeks coming into this game? Um, <clears throat> yeah, I thought our training had gone well. Um, I thought we'd, I thought we were going to come out of the traps very quickly. And sometimes uh, when you... Um, when you plan and prepare and you watch your team, you have a feeling of how the game's going to go and sometimes it doesn't quite um, go as you think. That would be one of those times today because I uh, can't criticise the preparation in terms of uh, we've all had the same time. We've had the same time that you know, Crystal Palace have had, but we, we didn't start the game well. I'd put it more down to perhaps the, the magnitude of the game, the league position and external factors maybe um, may hampering that. And I think we were better when we were freer. Um, when we had less less to lose. But that's certainly a lesson we're going to have to learn very, very quickly because um, the games aren't going to get any smaller for us. These are, these are massive games and um, the challenge gets even greater. Thank you. Okay, thanks, Peter. Uh, Tom Hopkinson. Eddie, I was, uh, I was just going to ask you about the, uh, the external uh, pressure as well and, and, and how the, the team now manage it as the pressure begins to build with only eight games to go. What, what, what will be key to handling that? I think try, trying just to play play football and not think too much about what the games mean and um, and how big they are. Yeah, you know we all know how big they are, and you can't kid the players. 
but they're footballers and they want to play football and they enjoy playing football. So I think the best thing for them to do is to go out and with the freedom of, of believing how good they are and just get them to, to play their normal way as they always have done. I think that's the key. Um, of course, we have to give everything and leave everything on the pitch. I think that was evident that we, we did that in the second half. Um, but certainly, we didn't we didn't plan to go out and be maybe as nervy as we were in the opening stages. Um, but that's what happened.